B in 2.1 G, 2.4 B, 2.4 F, 2.5, 2 2.8, 2 2.9. And those will not be due next week, but the, probably the week after next week. So uh, once we get out the stuff today, read ahead and uh, continue to work on those problems. Okay. 2.1B and, and G, and 2.4B and 2.4F, uh, 2.5, 2.8, 2.9. <clears throat> well, I'm not sure, the people that are watching the tape, I'm not sure how we're gonna do the assignments, but we'll have to work that out, and uh, I'll let you know. Uh, probably next week we'll have a better idea about that. But anyway, if you haven't done the assignments, the first assignment, uh, um, Rhonda probably has those, so you can get those from her. Okay, let's uh, continue. What I want to talk about here is um, we're writing this Nernst equation down, and that allows us to do some uh, calculations based on that. What we're going to do is we're going to have a simplified idea of what the flux is at the electrode surface. And so the flux at the electrode surface in one direction only, okay? So we're gonna limit our discussion again, make it even more simple. We're gonna, not gonna do, allow a three-dimensional type process. We're gonna do, do a single dimension of, of a reaction. And we're gonna put in a, a, a constant, which we'll later call the diffusion coefficient, but as units of centimeters squared per second. And then we're gonna put in the bulk concentration of species O and the species concentration of species O at the electrode surface. And then we're gonna put in another term, which we're gonna call delta. And that would have units of centimeters. Okay. Now if we rewrite that, we can actually rephrase that into a particular form of the equation which will be actually quite useful for later on for kind of uh, quick and dirty type calculations. We'll use the concept of what they call the mass transfer coefficient, m sub zero, and m sub zero if you notice has included now the factor of minus the diffusion coefficient and delta in the system. Ah. And if you notice, this will have the same units as the uh, rate as before. It's kind of centimeters per second. And um, that's a rate of reaction. In other words, the flux of the reaction is this rate of reaction times the concentration difference. Okay, and it has units of centimeters per second. Now, this is not a normal type of rate constant that you might have seen before in chemistry classes, but it's in fact, it's a heterogeneous rate constant. What's that mean? Well, that's the kind of reaction that occurs at the interfacial zone. And uh, you can actually think of a, of the, as that rate as being the equivalent of a cubic centimeter of material uh, being going through a, a, a area of material per second. So the units on that really comes from taking a cubic centimeter of material and taking and then moving it through an area, which is our electrode area per second. So it's like a flux of material per second through that material. Now this is called a semi-empirical theory because we put in this little fudge factor uh, delta into the system. And we're gonna put in delta just to make it easy to calculate. All right. 
So now that we've got a, an expression for the flux, we can actually write down uh, an equation for that. And we say that the current, again, knowing the current being is equal to I over NFA is equal to the flux at the electrode surface for any particular time. Uh, and that's going to be equal to the mass transfer coefficient, which is this heterogeneous uh, rate of reaction. And it refers to, it reflects how fast material is moving from the bulk to the interface. And the concentration difference between the bulk and the electrode co concentration. Notice now that the flux is not just uh, something that we can arbitrarily choose. The flux is a function of the potential. Why is it a function of the potential? Because if you go back up here, you see that the concentration of O at the electrode surface is a function of potential by the Nernst equation, according to the setup that we've done. So we have to consider that. Let's think about the one particular limiting case in that case. For um, if, if the potential is high enough, the concentration of species O is equal to zero. In other words, at very high positive uh, or negative potential, I should say. Why do we say that? Well, you can see that from that equation that if we change the potential large enough to be large enough, the concentration of O becomes very small. If we consider that particular point in time when the concentration of species O is zero at the electrode interface, then we can rewrite our equation. I sub L over NFA is equal to M0 CO star, where I sub L is called the limiting current. Why do we call it I sub L? We call it I sub L limiting because if you think about the equations and what we've just done, as long as the potential is high enough, this concentration of species O will be zero or close enough to it that will make no effective difference. And so this term will always be equal to the bulk. And so we see that we've lost any potential dependence at that point. So once we get the potential large enough, the current will level off according to our simple theory. And then the current will be dependent on the mass transfer coefficient, how rapidly stuff moves from the bulk to the interface, and the bulk concentration of the species in that system. Now let's note this relationship. We know that I over NFA is equal to I sub L over NFA minus um, M sub zero times the concentration of species O at the electrode interface. And if we rearrange that, the species concentration of species O at the electrode interface is uh, equal to I sub L minus I over NFA M0. Okay. Again, let's reiterate. I sub L is a limiting current. I is the current at any particular time. N is the number of electrons that we transfer across in any particular electron transfer event. F is the Faraday. A is the electrode area. M sub 0 is the mass transfer coefficient of species O. Now C sub R is also can be derived in a similar manner. It's a little bit simpler because we don't have to think about it being um, present initially in solution. So and also I over NFA is 
equal to the mass transfer coefficient of species R at the electrode surface. Okay, so using these parts of the, of the equation that we've just calculated, we can substitute those back into the Nernst equation. Remember the Nernst equation um, that we wrote previously, right here, where we have C sub O at the electrode surface and C sub R at the electrode surface. We can put those numbers in, uh, equations in, and we see that E now is equal to E zero plus, oops, plus, RT over NF, natural log, and we've separated some variables here when we have the natural log, that's fine, plus RT over NF, natural log of the limiting current minus I over I. In other words, the potential current relationship now is is given in this particular equation. We can, for any particular potential, we can derive a current out of that system. So let's draw that. It's not obvious how you do that. Actually, you have to kind of do an iterative process to find the proper current from any given potential, but you can do that. So if we plot I, uh, versus E, we get a curve that looks something like this. Yeah, sorry. And let's point out a couple of things. Here is I is equal to zero. This current here is our limiting current. And you see what we predicted has happened. As soon as we make the potential negative enough, again, this is negative potential on this axis. Uh, as soon as we make the potential negative enough, the current approaches a constant value, which we call I sub L, the limiting current. There's also a point that's a point of inflection on that curve as we go up, this sigmoidal curve, and you see that that potential is uh, kind of a special one. We call it the E one half point. turns out that this part of the curve, where E one half is, is given by this particular point, because this, when this is one half, then this becomes important. So the midpoint, or the E one half point of the curve is dependent on the E zero, which is our kind of a theory, th th uh, thermodynamic potential, that's the potential of our cell, and uh, a term which depends on the mass transfer coefficients of those two species. Usually the mass transfer coefficient of species R and O are somewhat similar, but not always. Species R may be able to transport it more rapidly than species O for a number of reasons. Uh, R might be a, uh, a neutral species and O might be an ion, and those often would have different rates of diffusion or different rates of mass transport. Okay. So this equation, this shows you the current current potential curve for a particular type of experiment where we've made some very simple, very much simplifying assumptions. We've assumed that there's only O present in solution, that the rate of the reaction for electron transfer is very fast, and that there's no uh, chemical reactions occurring at the same time. And we've also used a kind of a fudge factor in the system, that this delta term that we mentioned before. Okay. Okay. So this kind of system that we described seems very uh, too simple to be real. In fact, there is a, uh, just a few types of chemical situations or electrochemical situations that arise that actually we can use this type of equation to pretty good effect. One of them is to use a system that they often would, well, a system that's used quite a lot, it's called the rotating disk electrode. What 
you do is you take a, um, this is a kind of a cross section. This would be the electrode. RDE, rotating disc electrode. And you rotate that electrode fairly rapidly. And so what happens is you set up a fairly well-defined convective situation. You use that ro uh, rotating electrode to convect material rapidly to the electrode surface. And what happens is that you get kind of a mass transfer in this sort of direction where you have the material being pumped to the electrode surface by the rotation process. And so you get a good, well-defined convective system and you get uh, a little stagnant layer next to the electrode surface. And in fact, in that particular case, ma the mass transfer coefficient can be calculated. And I'm just going to write it down. I'm not going to try to explain all the terms, but just to see what happens. Uh, this, the mass transfer coefficient is 0.62 times the diffusion coefficient of whatever species O is being transported to the electrode surface. Omega is the angular velocity. Uh, which, um, which is an RPM or something like that, and V is the kinem kinematic viscosity. And uh, it's a uh, viscosity, uh, it's a moving solution viscosity term. So we can rotate that at a frequency perhaps as fast as uh, 10,000 RPM. Uh, it might be, in fact. I don't I forget the. Uh, another um, situation that arises where we can get very accurate uh, uh, and a very accurate calculation of the mass transfer coefficient, a very simple one, is uh, an experiment that I do in my lab called a scanning electrochemical microscope, where we can take a, a very small electrode and put it quite close to the surface where the electrode is now uh, quite small, maybe 10 micrometers in diameter. And if we put that tip next to another electrode, the mass transfer process that occurs between those two electrodes is, is quite well defined and we get mass transfer coefficient of D0 over D. Now that's not delta. Remember we kind of used delta before as a, as a fudge factor, but in this case the D is the, the distance between the two, and uh, in the so our mass transfer coefficient, the closer we get those two uh, species, our two electrodes together, the more current flows because the higher the mass transfer comes in. calculation that we've just done is, is all commonly called the Nernst approximation. The idea is that rather than trying to calculate exactly what the concentration profile is between the electrode surface and the interface, just assume that it's a linear function between some layer between the electrode surface and the, and the interface. So that delta is a, is a layer of solution where it's assumed that within that layer there is a, a linear change in the concentration to, to zero at the electrode surface. And then outside that region delta, the concentration is equal to the bulk. So our Nernst layer, in fact, our rotating disk electrode has a very similar type of properties as, as the Nernst layer. It has a fairly well-established C bulk concentration outside that stagnant layer, and it, once you're in that stagnant layer, you get a, a fairly linear change in the um, concentration to zero. All right. Well, we've made the assumption that R and O, our only O is present. Let's think about what happens if 
R and O are both present in the system. Uh, we can dry that equation again, and in fact, uh, I'll uh, let you think about doing that yourself, but you just would use the same basic process as before, uh, but assuming now that R is initially present. In that case, uh, the potential will, the current relationship is still a little different, although not significantly so. Um, we still have this mass transfer part, that's natural log of the ratio, plus RT over NF, natural log, where we now we have I limiting, but we have uh, IL sub C, which is the cathodic limiting current. I'll draw a diagram in a minute. Okay, and so if we look at the current potential curves for this particular case, we would see a curve that would look something like this. Um, I should say it looks like this. Where this... Any your derivation yeah. of the current part of it, the mm -hmm. IL comma the E or C? That's a C. C. You just, in, this, in the derivation, you have to distinguish between the limiting current from the cathodic reaction and the limiting current for the anodic reaction. And the reason you can do that is that if we go sufficiently negative, the oxidative reaction will no longer occur, and if we go sufficiently positive, the reductive reaction will no longer occur. So now we have two separate limiting currents, the anodic limiting current and the cathodic limiting current. And of course, those depend on the concentrations of the O and R in solution. And it turns out there is a special point here where E is equal to the equilibrium potential. So this again is like the initial case that we looked at right away in the class where we put iron two and iron three in solution and we noted that it stuck at a certain potential, 0.77 volts. So that's the equilibrium potential and as we move the potential away from that we would get curves that look something like this where you'd get a limiting current for the cathodic process reduction of uh, iron three to the limiting current for the anodic process for the oxidation of iron two. All right. Well, I wanted to start out with this because I wanted to show you the, the basic idea that we're going to talk about. Now, this is not a, um, a very good derivation of the current, uh, um, the current uh, potential curves, and we'll do better derivations of that. The reason we're not doing better ones right away is that they're actually quite, uh, they can be quite uh, involved, particularly for cases where we have situations where there's a chemical reaction involved, and in the case where we have a kinetic limitation. Here we've only considered the fact that mass transfer has to occur to get the system to the electrode surface. As soon as mass transfer occurs, the electron transfer is instantaneous. Well, in many cases, in most cases, electron transfer is significantly limiting the overall reaction, and so we have to consider that to get a good description of the process. Okay. Let me uh, quickly point out what would happen, for example, if we have a um, a metal electrode again suppose we have species O prime that's in equilibrium with a species O 